Carolina, of course, has been drawn into the Raleigh Regional, where NC State is the one, Gamecocks the two. James Madison will be Carolina's opponent on Friday. They're the three. And Bryant, is it Bryant College or Bryant University? University? Okay. Kale, Kale's yeah, here. I'll Kale take Kale's word for it. All right. There is a Bryan College in Dayton, Tennessee. Yeah, this is Bryant, and apparently they're in right. Rhode Island, which is not an island, but nevertheless. Uh, I don't know much about them, but that's who NC State gets on Friday night, and then we'll see what happens. Uh, we talked to Coach Kingston today. We'll have some sound from, from him coming up in just a little bit and some of the things that Mark had to say in yesterday's press conference after the Field of 64 announcement. So we'll get into that for you. The voice of the Gamecocks, Derek Scott, will be with us coming up at the bottom of the 4 o'clock hour for his regular Tuesday visit. I will put an over-under on one and a half. Uh, yeah, one and a half that uh, I say it's Monday at some point during the show. I think I'm, I'm hitting that over. I'm nailing it. Yeah. I hope not. On a I'll... Monday edition of the post game show. Now, what happens more? Here's another fun prop bet. Yeah. Do you call today Monday more than you call this show the af- or the halftime show today? Yes. Today, the likelihood is greater that I say it's Monday than I say it's the halftime show. All right, that's Kale, You heard it. If you hear him say one or the other, that's we're what gonna, I we're think. Mark this. That's what I think. I'm not. I'm not absolutely certain of that at this point. I did earlier tell one of my daughters that I made. The uh, the bar the the Boston butt on Saturday th- because I was thinking yesterday was Sunday and today was Monday. They'll mess up your week like that. So I did actually make it on Sunday. So there you go. Um, so we'll jump in here, Carolina. Listen, I, you know, I like this draw. I'm just going to mm-hmm. come right out. And Bill Gunner and I uh, saw Coach Kingston earlier today. We were doing our, our cocktail hour television program for Gamecocks Plus. You know, shameless plug. Please check it out. It's a good, fun time. Um, you won't, in my opinion, Elijah. Now, look, if you get to Omaha, it's a different story. But you won't run through a more difficult gauntlet than you went through last week playing five games in five days. Now, mm-hmm. Does that battle harden you or does it completely exhaust you? I don't know which or a little bit of both. Um, But you've got time to rest up, you know, and they are having some practices over at Founders Park. But from what I understand, they're going to be, you know, light. They're going to work on, yes, fans. uh, I am told firsthand they will be working on some defensive fundamentals. They understand that there were a couple of defensive plays that really let them down last week. They're they're not immune to 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 what happened. Hard to shy away from that. No, it is. And and coach last night and a little bit today, but la- you know he said in so many words, "Hey, we get it, but I can't sit here right now and beat them up." You know this is this is who you are. That I think they look. He he was right. They fielded nine seventy nine as a team in conference play. It's pretty good. It's not, yeah. it's not it's not fantastic, but you know what? At this level, that's pretty good. You know, you, you'll take it. You, you'll take anything above 975. Yeah, it's almost, that's almost 98%. Yeah, I mean, that's, 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 that's good. It, again, it's not dazzling defense, but it's, it's solid defense. Uh, it let them down last week. There's no doubt. And now with, you know, potential injury uh, to Casas being what it is, that that further shifts what it is that you might be able to do defensively. It takes a big bat out of the lineup as well, too. So you've Mm -hmm. got to think about that. Um, So, you know, when Tippett went out, it was different, right? Yep. Now, and Tippett's bat was coming around. And look, you know, Will's hit a home run or two since he's come back. And and so, I mean. Hit one in this tournament. Yeah. I don't don't know. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, a lot of home runs in this tournament. Um, but I, you know, I, so I don't know what that's going to look like. Anyway, they're, they're going to practice. They're going to play Friday at two. So they'll be ready for the heat and those kind of things. And this is South Carolina baseball. So they're used to that, but I like this draw. Now I'm not telling you, Hey, South Carolina is going to go to Raleigh and win. I'm that's not at all what I'm saying, but I like this draw. Uh, if I'm let's, let's put it this way. And, and I don't know how you feel about it. Like East Carolina gets Wake Forest. That sucks for them. That's North, a tough draw. North Carolina gets LSU, uh, who, again, South Carolina went toe-to-toe with, mm-hmm. right? So, I mean, is there – how big of a difference is it for North Carolina to have gotten LSU relative to South Carolina? But it's getting a red-hot SEC team. Yeah. Um, Clemson gets Vanderbilt, right? Mm-hmm. So, 
And Coastal. And Coastal. And Coastal. Yep. Uh, and by the way, ooh, there's some oh, stuff man. about Coastal. We'll talk about that a little bit later. We got time for that one today. Yeah. We might have to talk about some of the things Eric Bakic had to say, too, by the way. <laughs> I was going to say, yeah, uh, he, he may or may not have poked the bear a little bit. Uh, on that one. By the way, uh, I want to tip my cap to our buddy Hale McGranahan. Hale put out a tweet about, uh, like, from the Chappelle show, when keeping it real goes wrong. <laughs> and he had to explain to a uh, a Twitter user, like, what that meant. And then it's like, man, that's, like, poor poor Hale. Like, that was funny. Yes. And then he showed, then he went back and he actually got the guy the clip, but the guy was like, I don't understand what this means. And it's like, he was just saying, it's like, if hey, you have it was to like, explain the skit. Yeah. It's hey, over hey, the hey was like, head. dude, you ever heard of the Chappelle show? Like, uh, it's just, it's something funny here. But way to go, Hale. Hale did a nice job on that. If you haven't seen or heard what Eric Bakich had to say, uh, it's worth your time and we'll try to get it. Oh, we, we have, have it. it. We have it good. We'll, we'll get that for you in just a bit. Uh, I've not done a deep dive yet into James Madison or NC State at this point. NC State was here last year. We know what conference NC State's coming out of. We know that that allows them to have the kind of season they had and be able to host. Uh, Coach Avent has had his team, you know, at the College World Series a couple of times. That's a, it's a fantastic baseball program. So, and I like the way Mark described it you know, yesterday, Elijah, when he said it's almost like a home and home regional. They were here yeah. last year. And, kind of. and we go to their place this year, and we'll see what happens. James Madison um, played four games with Arkansas. They won one of them. They lost both games. They played with Maryland, and they were supposed to play Virginia Tech twice. They only played them once. One of them was rained out and couldn't be remade, and they won that one. So they were 2-5 and five against Power 5 competition this season. A um, couple of crossover opponents. Who did we say? Georgia Southern, Georgia State. Yep. Uh, they didn't play upstate. They had a, they they that one also got rained out. I think scheduled to play yeah. upstate, but did not play upstate. So um, you know they score a lot of runs. Carolina scores a lot of runs. Uh, Carolina's team ERA is over five. JMU's is over six. I expect Saturday, or excuse me, Friday, Elijah. The game starts a little bit after two. Uh, you and I will be prepared to do something, and I got a hunch that it's going to be a lot like what we were prepared to do yeah. <laughs> last week where we might come in and go, hey, y'all. Hi. Bye. Yeah. yeah. I, I, I got a hunch. One of those. I got a hunch that game goes like three and a half hours, man. You know, I, I could be dead wrong. Maybe it's a two-to-one. But I like this draw for South Carolina. I think when you look around at some of the places they could have been sent, uh, it's not even so much about – well, I, I just I like this draw. I, I don't know how else to put it. I, I, if I try to delve too deeply and say, oh, boy, whew, glad you avoided that one. I, I, I don't think that Mark's team wanted to avoid anything. Mm -hmm. They knew they were going to be sent somewhere. Um, and, again, you and I were ready for the – I mean, if, look, if Carolina was in Clemson instead of Andy and it's and it's Clemson, South Carolina, and Coastal in the same regional. Would have loved that. Yeah, that would have been brilliant. The South Carolina regional. Yeah, that would have been, been fantastic. Uh, I got zero issue with that. It would have been a lot of fun to go see what happens. I mean, Carolina played Clemson well, you know, and that was a long time ago. What, what's different now? I, I'd like to know that, you know. Maybe you'll see them somewhere down the, the line. Maybe you won't. That but, would, that, Clemson would have to do something they haven't done since 2010, though. Um, you know, you beat North Carolina when you played them, so nothing, nothing to be concerned about there. You won the Greenville Regional the last time you were in it, what, six, seven years ago. There's, there's really nothing that's like Carolina's going to look at and go, oh, whew. Man, we whew, glad we didn't have to go there, you know. But of all the ones in the area that you were going to go to, this one feels like now, especially with the teams that were drawn in with you, like one that you can you can win. Am I predicting mm -hmm. that? No, I am not. But I I, I like their opportunity. Yeah, it's a, that's the thing. It's it's a very winnable region. And when you do look out of the non SEC hosting regionals, there's not a ton where you would have been, I guess, completely petrified to play in. You know, with all due respect to Arizona, if they were sent out to Tucson, I wouldn't have been trembling for them to have to play Arizona. Arizona Arizona's been good, yep. but they kind of they surged a little late to get that. Tallahassee. Well, they won their tournament, right? I think they won yeah. the last Pac-12 tournament. Yeah, the last yeah. one. Rest in peace. Yeah. Um, RIP Pac-12. That's right. Tallah the Tallahassee Regional. I think, you know, you can look at that like, okay, well, historically, Florida State's really good. Not what they have used to be. Had a solid season this year. That one I probably wouldn't have uh, would rather be in Raleigh than Tallahassee. I uh, would take you know being in Stillwater than than Raleigh, but at the same time there's just not a lot here where you're outside of the SEC schools 
where you'd not want to see South Carolina. In. Right. So really, this is it's a win. You're closer to home. You're going to have a good fan showing. I expect there to be a good fan showing. I think there will be. Especially after the way you, you won three games in Hoover. Yeah. And you didn't expect to win anything yeah. in Hoover. No, I mean, I, I feel like most people around here uh, expected South Carolina to have been beaten by Alabama in the play-in mm-hmm. round and then crossed their fingers and hoped for the best. And instead, you elevated yourself back into a two-seed and had, had a nice opportunity, you know, had a nice opportunity. So, anyway, all right, uh, sound from Coach Kingston coming up. Again, Derek Scott will be with us in a bit. We'll get into the Braves. We'll get into Bill Walton. Uh, there's a lot to do. SEC meetings going on in Destin. So plenty to discuss, but uh, sound from Coach Kingston on the other side. You're listening to the post game show. Twenty minutes after three o'clock on this Tuesday afternoon. Welcome back into the post game show. All right, yes, got through both of them right there. Two for two. Thank you. Well, because now it's a top of mind. Yeah. When you get too relaxed and too comfortable, is that's when that's when, when it happens. happens. Yeah, that's oh. when it, that's when it happens. Um, if I plan this out right, I can just let a lot of sound that we have from others carry the day, which gives me less time to talk and fewer opportunities to screw it up. That's what analytics would tell you. So there's there's that. Uh, let's start with cut number five on today's list, please, Elijah. Uh, this is Mark Kingston, about a minute long here, assessing his team's run last week in Hoover. We loved it. I mean, again, it's it's the greatest conference in America. It's the greatest players in America. It's the greatest coaches in America. I'll say it's the greatest umpires in America. Um, it's it's the best of everything. It's the best. Uh, look, this stadium and what this town does for this week is incredible. I've, I haven't had anything that reminds me of the Omaha experiences that I've had anything more than what is put on this week. It's everything that everybody that's in baseball wants to be a part of, and it's tremendous. And it was tremendous for me to watch our team. It's hard to think that you can have significant growth on a team this late in the season, but we did. We did because there were so many different challenging situations that our kids will be able to learn from. We were able to put so many young guys in situations through thick and thin, through good and bad. They're going to be better because of it. And it's the biggest stage they'll play on until they get to the big leagues. this is a very similar feel to Omaha, especially when you're the team playing LSU like that. That was hostile territory out there. Um, and our kids, our kids will learn from it. And our kids aren't perfect. Nobody's team is perfect. These are 18 to 22, 23 year olds. They're going to make mistakes. It's our job to help get them through it, learn the lesson and, and be better because of it. So it's a tremendous week. Hard to think that it can get better until, until you get to Omaha. So there you go. Um... And we said that a little bit earlier. You know, you, you look at it, Elijah, and, and running that kind of gauntlet, you you won't see anything like that unless you make it to Omaha, where you've got to mm-hmm. play a bunch of games against some great teams over the course of that week. You know, this weekend, the format is different. There's only four schools there. Uh, you know, you go to the Super, and while the Super can be very difficult against someone else, that's it. You see the point I'm making. Like, you know, you won't play more than four games this weekend. You won't play more than three games at a Super Regional. Um, that, that was, and, and I think Carolina surprised a lot of, I wonder if they surprised themselves, you know, even ethically, if, in, in other words, like silently between their own ears, did they surprise themselves last week? Wake up a little bit. You know? I think, I think it's a lot of that waking up a little bit. Cause like, what do we talk about before they went to Hoover? Right? Like they seem like they were zapped of any mojo swagger, whatever word you want to use to describe, I guess that, that inner confidence you have. They look like they're completely void of that in the series against Knoxville as soon as Tennessee started crushing the ball a little bit. Mm -hmm. And that seemed problematic, right, because anybody you play in Hoover is going to crush the ball. There's a lot of really good bats that are on any any given team in the Southeastern Conference. So, you know, one like things that we talked about in terms of just getting confidence back, like, you know, go back and look at highlights, like like you doing well and saying, look, those kids are in the room right now. Like these successful plays, they're in the room right now. Mm-hmm. And sometimes you got to be able to just do it again for a game. And maybe that Alabama game was the spark that, hey, that got you out of a funk, said this is our blueprint to winning baseball games. Let's put runs up on the board. Let's come up with big outs when we need to and be able to stack some wins. And look, and you were even a couple of those away for, away from winning against LSU. Yeah. You know, at, well, LSU is the lowest seed you played in this tournament. That's the one you got beat by twice. You played much higher seeds on the way to that semifinal game, and you beat them. Like, you beat, a, you know, RPI number one Kentucky going into the week. You beat an Arkansas team that took two of three from you here in Columbia. You did some things that you even haven't done 
all year. And I think that's a pretty significant leapfrog to be able to get into the most important stretch of the season, the stretch of the season that's going to define your season. So I, I think there was a little bit of showing yourself that yeah. you can win these games. You can get back at it because you've done it before. And on that note, here's more from Coach about uh, you know what he, the staff, the guys all brought back from Hoover looking to the national tournament. Takeaways, couldn't be prouder of my guys, couldn't be prouder of how they handle. I, I, I struggle to use the word adversity. Adversity is not, you don't get adversity on a baseball field unless you get injured. Adversity is, is health problems. Adversity is, is those types of things. We had failure to deal with this week, but every team has. And I'm just so proud of our guys that they are trying to make sure that they learn from the failures, that they handle them properly, and they're better because of them. But my takeaway is that I'm glad the country got to see what we're all about, what we're capable of, the good and the bad. You know, we're not a perfect team. We have some warts that we need to try to try to cover up at times, but we know how to win and we can beat anybody. I mean, we, we've shown that we can beat anybody. So um, back to the, the question about the league, too. I'll just go ahead and say, in my opinion, every team in our league that gets to uh, the regionals will have a chance to go to Omaha. I don't think there's any question about that. So it's going to be a matter of who gets good draws, who's in a, in a spot where they're playing hot against teams that maybe are not quite as hot. Um, but every team in our league that gets to a regional will have a chance to go to Omaha. For what it's worth, by the way, the way the draw is uh, structured, you could technically get eight schools from the Southeastern Conference to be the eight participants at the College World Series. It's certainly very unlikely. At that point, should they just play it in Hoover? Just kidding, just kidding. You always play it in Omaha. Beautiful stadium tradition. But I, uh, I, I was I I read that this morning, and I, so I went and looked. I was like, "Dang, really?" I mean, not that I didn't believe the person that wrote the article. I just wanted to kind of see it for myself in bracket form, and I was like, "Oh, had to double check." Yeah, but a couple of them. It's going to be tough. It's going to be tough. Yeah, so, not everybody got good draws. Let's uh, just say that. You heard Mark in there mentioned, uh, you know, some some warts to cover up. Obviously, uh, defensive miscues, both the you know, physical errors and mental mistakes, did cost South Carolina in their games against LSU. Heck, they they got away with them in in some other games. Mm -hmm. They did. They did not have a great defensive week at all. Here's Mark on trying to get that corrected in time. You know, we, we fielded 979 in 30 conference games this year. It was not a problem all year. You know, why it was a problem this this uh, week on this field, I don't know. We got we to gotta dig into it, got to talk to our players, communicate a little bit, ask them as we get to a regional, is there anything we can do to help get you more ready? I don't think there is because, uh, you know, our guys prepare very well. Our, our guys are, are good. Um, we feel a 979. That's pretty damn good all year. And for whatever reason, it, that, that type of defense didn't show up this week. And uh, we'll do everything we can to get it better. Yeah, I, I don't have explanations for it either. Again, a lot of them, I think, were, were mental. You know, there was mm -hmm. a couple that were sort of a little bit of both. Like the Casas one at first, you know, where the ball gets through, and you just got to knock that thing down. You got to know in advance. You got to knock that thing. That can't get past you. Nope. You might not field it cleanly, but it can't get past you. You know, Ellis just seemed to get kind of – he got caught in no man's land, and you've got to know the situation there. And, you know, he had come on late. Maybe he was just a little nervous. Inexperience, you know. I yeah. think, field. See, I think he only got charged with one error. Right. Which – Well, you get charged with the physical, but, but not knowing the situation is what led to – and poor, poor guy, I felt bad for him because he committed about three. Yeah. Uh, one, and two on one play where the ball just completely eats him up. And, yeah. I'll, you know, hard hit ball. Yeah. That thing was put on a rope, yeah, yeah. but it was it, it was right to him. And that ball goes in the outfield, and he stops chasing it for a little bit. And then Dylan Brewer stops chasing it for a little bit. And then Brewer has to come back and chase the ball back again because there was some indecision between the two of them. You know, we can half an error between those two fellas. Right. Somebody's got, like, you, you can't have both guys staring at the ball as it's rolling. Yeah. That's how the guy goes from first to second, you know, and that's eventually how we end up getting that fateful nine in it, ninth inning that we had uh, a few days ago. But uh, that was a good mix of inexperience and being in just a really high pressure packed moment where you just didn't get the best out of a player you might expect more from. We'll have uh, more from Coach Kingston later, later on in the program. And, again, Derek Scott going to join us. We'll also have more of an overview of, uh, of the entire tournament throughout the day, so plenty more to get to. But Mark just mentioned in there uh, adversity is typically something on a baseball field that stems from injury. Well, 
There's a team that plays about three hours west of us that is now going through it. We'll discuss as the postgame show continues.